Hey, Dan. How, you how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for doing this today. I really appreciate you taking the time to have a chat. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time. But uh, yeah, the uh, obviously the guys at Apple Music wanted to uh, wanted me to chat about your amazing show that you've been doing over the last year or so. Um, but I also wanted to talk a, a little bit about your own music as well, and and also what this last year has been like for you because it's been a very frustrating one for all of us. But as a musician, I guess it's been a, a particularly difficult one. Yeah, it's been a. I mean, I think you said it best. It's been, I think, a year where everybody is, um, because of what we can't do, I think we're um, in touch with what we love to do even more than ever, um, which maybe there's a newfound thankfulness and appreciation for those things too. Maybe that's a silver lining if there is such a thing, but yeah, for sure. Um, but, um, as, a, as a songwriter, how have you adapted to the whole situation because I, I speak to a lot of artists who've done a lot of the zoom writing thing how, how have you got to grips with that yeah and I, I saw your interview with Morgan Evans by the way and I loved that I thought it was oh, so thank great you. <laughs> and he talked about one thing he highlighted that I think was just so dead on is that spontaneity of the the magic that we we, we refer to it as in the room like you'll say, oh, there's something in the room. And that in the room is that energy and that chemistry that you get with people. And it is hindered a little bit by the Zoom delay or just just not being in that same space together. Smelling the whatever the atmosphere is and hearing, you know, whatever riff somebody might be pulling up on the guitar. So I think there is, there's the, there's an intimacy to writing which is just, it's more inspiring in person. Yeah. For me, I have, um, I've done a little bit of Zoom writing. Um, the, the shows, the Apple shows do, they have, it's been a year of me learning how to do something truly new in my skill set, And so I really have spent most of the last year just trying to get my muscles a little stronger at do, like doing that. But what I have done for myself musically, that was kind of a big, it was a big splurge for me was I bought a piano and I don't play piano really. <laughs> that sounds kind of like an idiotic thing to spend your money on. <laughs> but um, I was just like, I want an instrument that I can't overthink and that will let me play like, like a kid, like, I think, you know, I love the stories of my peers when they are starting to figure out an instrument and they're just doing it for the love of and the genuine curiosity around it. And um, I'm not a great instrumentalist, um, but I play guitar kind of as a necessary evil. Um, and because and because songs need a home, even when you're writing them, they, they kind of need to, they need to be grounded by something. So for me, what it's been a lot of experimenting and just almost forcing myself to not finish a song, like just sit down without an agenda. If I sit down at the piano, just for the love of making noise, what can happen? And so that's what I've been kind of just experimenting and honestly wouldn't have probably had the time or the freedom to do that if it weren't for this season of life. Yeah. Well, you mentioned there about learning new skills and um, you probably saw me speaking to Morgan about this, but um, how have you kind of adapted the, to the position of being a radio host? Because obviously you've got experience having done your podcast in the past, but how much of a different skill is it to become a radio host? The, the area that I um, feel that I am working on the most and that I probably I'm trying to do on purpose is the podcast was really fun. Um, because it was completely my agenda and I could just go in with my, again, with curiosity and try and figure out, you know, what this person, what knowledge or wisdom they could pass on or how I could help them tell the story of a song. What I have to learn and I'm still learning to do with the shows is I, I have to show up as myself, but the goal is really to be the vehicle that connects the listener to the music. And it's not about me, but I, but I have to, there's, it's, there's diff, a difference between just disappearing. Like that's not my job, 
but my job is to show up in a way that allows the listener to enjoy the music even more, or I need to not, it's, that's how I think about every break is just, I only need to say something more than a couple words if if I can add, if I think I can add to the listener experience. So it's definitely trying to listen almost as more of like in a role of service than, than a role of um, spotlight. Yeah. Well, for anybody who hasn't had the chance to check out one of your Apple Music Country shows, tell us a little bit about the kind of overall segments in the in the show and what people can expect from it because you've had some amazing guests on over the last few weeks. I know. It's been, incredible. It's been crazy. So I would say there's kind of, I am on three, for the most part, three different kinds of shows. Um, one is the very first show that we launched in the country space at all, which is, is almost a year and a half in, and that's called Today's Country. Today's Country is a playlist show and it's built around our most successful and beloved um, country playlist, which is called Today's Country. And so that is always paired with a cover star and that coincides with whoever is the cover that week and usually that is because something very impactful and news newsy is happening in their world musically so a recent example would be we had eric church on to talk about the triple album and what i love about that show and specifically is we can stretch out a little more and really talk creative process and talk vulnerabilities and talk, you know, for, you know, just jour musical journey. And so that, I would say that show is highly curated, highly edited, and we spend a lot of time producing that show so that you're getting a really um, impressive interview listening experience, but it's also pretty fast paced. So we move through things quickly and we're kind of, there's a format there. So that's, that happens every Friday. And then the other show it that's, you know, a really regular part of my life is the daily show, which is called the Kelly Bannon show, which we do have interviews and sometimes they are a, a longer or more in-depth look at what we covered on today's country, but sometimes they're completely separate. And I would say that show is more spontaneous in the moment. And it's just like listening to the radio with a buddy who maybe happens to have a long history of trying to make it in this industry. So yeah. um, that is really, it's, it's really about listening to the music together and just enjoying it together um, and trying to be um, reflective of what's happening even on a daily basis in country music, if that makes sense. Well, yeah, I wanted to ask um, who your favorite guest has been because you've, you've had the likes of Shania, like you just mentioned, Eric Church there, Carrie Underwood. You had so many incredible experiences with these people. Is it the one that really stands out for you? It's crazy. Honestly, I had forgotten about Shania. It's like <laughs> there have been so many. I mean, Shania was crazy because we didn't know it was going to happen. We had very little warning. And it's Shania. You know, she's super busy. She's got a million things going on. And so it, I think I had less than 24 hours warning that we were going to actually get the interview. And Dan, I'll tell you what, I was... I, I might have even been wearing this shirt. I was sitting right here and my heart was just like racing as we were calling her because, you know, and I've had a couple instances of, of truly interviewing someone who was formative to my musical experience growing up. And I will tell you what, one, I mean, I was blown away. She's just, she had just gotten off the boat. <laughs> She'd just gotten off her boat. <laughs> as you do. You know. Yes, you do. <laughs> and she was glowing. She was just this effortless, beautiful, effervescent. I mean, it was just wild. And the, the thing that's hard, and you you know this, and it seems you're quite good at this. Oh, thank you. You have you have a few moments to set if you don't know the person already to establish some rapport with them. Mm -hmm. And you know those first couple moments if it if it gets wonky it might change the tent like the feeling of that entire conversation so i mean with i was just like oh how do i like i gotta get in there and connect with her and then get out of her way because she's just gonna <laughs> and that was just that was nuts um eric church was wild for me because and i haven't told him this but 
um, I had a lot of, I did a lot of preparation for that interview because this triple album is so massive and it's going to be so meaningful in the country space. And he is a, tr a true artist in the, in like at the truest form. And he's someone who really has influenced me from um, a music making perspective. But what was wild about that interview is I really only know, sometimes I'm interviewing people I know, that's pretty simple because they aren't freaking out that I might try and corner them and say, get them to say something that they don't want to say. They're not they're They, we already know each other well enough to know they, I want them to succeed in the interview, but with, um, Shania, you know, had never met her. Um, and with Eric, I've only met him a handful of times and he was already so successful when I was at the label at the same time as him, we just didn't overlap all that much. And so what was just amazing to me in that interview is he just immediately locked in and was willing. It was almost like speaking with your kin. There was a family chemistry there that I just, I couldn't have made happen. He just showed up willing to share and just blew me. I mean, left me feeling challenged as an artist. Like, am I brave enough to be creative on this level? And just, it was such a beautiful, um, such a beautiful interview. I was just so, so floored by his, the way he, he shared his story. Uh, he's, he's killing the game right now. I was listening to his, his triple album last night for the first time. It is just, it is so far ahead of most of the, the, the game at the moment. It's just so creative, so experimental, so brave. I just love everything that Eric Church does. It's brilliant. Dan, I do not know what is happening. Oh. My Siri just turned on a Taylor Swift song. So I was like, is Dan providing a new soundtrack? I mean, nope, it was I just my- I haven't got those kind of powers. I wish I did. <laughs> Please tell me again, you were saying you just, I could barely hear you over yeah, folklore. Yeah, yeah, I was just saying, I was, I was listening to Eric Church's album, the, the triple album for the first time last night, and he's just so far ahead of the game. It is unbelievable in terms of bravery, creativity on that album. It's phenomenal. It's just amazing. And uh, it's so it's so inspiring. It is. And another thing I wanted to chat with you about is that you're obviously very passionate about promoting the females in country music on your show as well. And that's such a big thing at the moment with everything that CMT are doing and there seems to be a real real kind of movement going on. Um, it must make you so proud to see the strength of the females in country music at the moment, the quality of the music they're putting out, and also how brave they are at being outspoken about things. Yes. And I think you hit the nail on the head. Um, there's no shortage of female talent in country music. And we have been talking about the problem for a long time. And I think what is um, so amazing about what Apple has empowered me to do is we can talk about it, but we don't even have to because we can just play people whether it's women, whether it is like people that are not getting the representation that they deserve in the industry from a racial perspective, we can just play them where they belonged the whole time. And I really, you know, I, I'm happy to go, yay, yay, look, we get to play a bunch of women, but I'm also happy to just put them where they belong to the whole time. Um, and, and what I think is so interesting is no one is coming at me saying, whoa, whoa, why are you playing all these women? Like when we just put them in places that make sense anyway, and we are thoughtful about where we put them and what songs people, it, no one's noticing their gender. They're mm. just noticing that they love the music. And then of course, I think what we saw as far as the Grammy nominations in the album category for country, all women, and I'm going to include a little big town because it is really a female fronted band. I feel like the dudes in that band would be like, yeah, we, we are. Um, I think that is a testament to just how creative and impactful and bold the musical statements that, that our women are making right now. And it's connecting and it's not just connecting from, you know, like a, it's not just connecting in that kind of, um, I'm looking for the right word, like a critical acclaim yeah. perspective. It's connecting like on a deep, 
in a deep way. Mm. And um, just before I let you go, Kelly, because I, I could speak with you all day, it's so easy. <laughs> I feel, I love this interview. This is so fun. Um, I wanted to chat with you a little bit about your music as well, because it's been a little while since you heard some original music of your own. So I was wondering if you got any plans and have you got any music that's in the bank and maybe ready to go at some point? Oh man, I wish we did. <laughs> um, I actually, I do have some old masters um, that I, um, I do have some old masters that we could probably do something with, but what we're planning on doing this year, the last thing that I'd put out was in 2019, I put out my debut album, which was called Favorite Colors. And then last spring, we actually took a demo that I had just sung like literally right through in my kitchen because I didn't have this little studio even set up. Um, we put, I like sang the demo vocal and we decided to just put that out and it was called the optimist because it just felt timely, but we're going to, we're, I need to write the album. We have a few songs, um, but I need to, I've got to write, I've got to write the album, the next project. And I'm, I am looking to do something, um, kind of soulful and, um, and, and really country. And so we're kind of playing with the, that palette of what would it, what, what it, would it sound like and starting to dream up those storylines. So, but I've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> well, I look forward to hearing all of that when we eventually get the chance, but, uh, Kelly, Thanks. thank you so much for doing this today. I really, really appreciate your time and, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll keep enjoying the show. Thank you, Dan. I really appreciate you giving me a platform 